Hi, this is Jared Neeming here with a video about the COV ID 19 and the outbreak that is going to occur shortly in the United States. Uh, and I am uh, primarily want to point you all to the website flattenthecurve.com, which uh, provides sort of a one-stop shop for all the information that you uh, might need uh, in order to get through what's going to occur. Uh, much of what I say here is written up in my blog post right here. So the first thing I want to say is that uh, as a week, as of a week ago, I was in most of your boats. I was thinking, look, this is basically just another flu, maybe a little bit more severe, but really no big deal. And I want to go through why it is actually a much bigger deal than the flu. So the first thing is that uh, we have no natural immunity to this coronavirus and we have no vaccine. That means that everybody in the world is, can possibly get the disease. And that means that many will. And in fact, uh, about a month ago now, uh, an epidemiologist at Harvard suggested that about 40 to 70 percent of the world population uh, will get this coronavirus. So that's half of the world population. And each of your individual probabilities is about 0.5 of getting this coronavirus. So that's the first thing, no natural immunity. The second thing is that, in fact, this coronavirus, the COVID-19 disease, is worse than the flu. The flu has a fatality rate of about 0.1%, while this novel coronavirus has a mortality rate of 0.5 to 4%. If you go to the Flatten the Curve website, you can scroll down and there's a graphic that indicates the mortality by age. And we can see that the mortality by age uh, increases as you get older, as it does with the flu. All right, so probably more severe than thinking about this particular mortality rate is to think about how many cases are severe enough that they will need the hospital. And so there is a uh, back of the envelope calculation done by Liz Specht as of March 6th, uh, who just said, hey, look, how many beds are there in the United States and how many of those beds will be needed for the COVID-19 outbreak? And in particular, when are those beds going to be uh, filled? And so she starts off with some assumptions that you have to make to do these kind of calculations. Uh, but in particular, she starts off with the assumption about what percentage of those who get COVID-19 will need hospitalization. And we know from China and from Italy that uh, about 15% of cases needed hospitalization. In Italy, it was more dire, about 10% needed ICU treatment, let alone hospitalization. And so for the analysis that's going to be coming here, we are going to assume that, say, 10% of cases require hospitalization. And Liz Beck on March 6th, and now in a sort of more formal blog post here on Stat News, she just goes through the math about how many uh, beds will be needed in hospitals to accommodate these individuals. And so she goes through and says, uh, we have evidence to suggest that there will be a doubling of cases every six days. Uh, and that means that uh, by about April, end of April, we'll have a million people in the U.S. who have COVID-19, and that will double right every six days after that. And if you think about uh, how many hospital beds there are, uh, we have some statistics that are about 2.8 hospital beds per 1,000 people. Uh, many of them are currently occupied, so that leaves about 300,000 beds available across the nation. Perhaps we can open up some more, but that's a general rough guideline. So now if you put all that together, you can determine, with that doubling rate, you can determine that the all the hospital beds will be in the U.S. will be filled in early May. And the one of the issues here is that the for severe cases, it takes about three to six weeks to recover. And so those hospital beds are going to be taken up for a long time. And so this is where we come to flattening the curve. So flattening the curve, the main graphic is this one right here. Uh, in this graphic, we have two possible scenarios. We have the red scenario. The red scenario is uh, if we don't do anything, if we just treat this as business as usual, uh, and it goes along with Liz Speck's uh, estimate of when we'll run out of beds. So basically, if you look at the red curve, it comes up, right? So we start, uh, the x-axis here is time since first case. The y-axis is the number of total cases uh, or you can think about it as the number of cases that need hospitalization. Either way, it works. And uh, there's a sharp increase when things start out. And 
A reasonable model for this is exponential growth, that six day doubling time. So every six days it doubles, so you have a sharp increase. And the peak is really what we're talking about. The peak is really high here, and you'll notice the difference between where this peak is and where the capacity of the healthcare system is. So all the people above this dashed line are people who should be in the hospital, but can't because there are no beds available to them. And in that situation, those people have much worse mortality than, than somebody in a hospital, right? So we would like to be able to accommodate everybody who needs to be in the hospital to be in the hospital. Right now, we don't have enough beds. Uh, in China, they, they created two hospitals in 13 days. Uh, that's just not going to be possible here in the U.S. So what do we need to do? We need to do something called flattening the curve. So we need to take this red curve and we need to move it into what looks like this blue curve. So here's a visualization of how that might occur. So we have the first one if we don't do anything. Let me see. I'll refresh this page so you can actually see the animation. So here we go. Here's the animation. Uh, I'll have all the links for all of these uh, websites uh, down below. So the first peak is if we don't do anything, right, without any protective measures. And the next peak, right, as you saw it shift over to the right, um, is going to lengthen the time that total outbreak will occur. And in that lengthening the time, we're going to decrease the peak. And therefore, we're going to have fewer people that are above this dashed line, fewer people that need to be in the hospital, but that aren't. And therefore, we, are, we will have overall better uh, statistics in terms of how many people uh, die or how many people have severe symptoms from this outbreak. Okay, so this is why COVID-19 is a big deal. That is, we do not have the healthcare system capacity to deal with all the people that will get sick and need that hospitalization. So on this Flatten the Curve website, uh, there's also, there's a bunch of links, so you should you know, read through the whole thing. But in particular, there's a whole list here of what you should do and what you shouldn't do uh, with explanation, right? So do the st standard things that you should uh, in any uh, disease. So you should wash your hands. You should uh, not get into crowds, um, lower your risk. Me personally, I'm starting to work at home. Um, I am going to limit how often I go out even to get groceries. And I'm just going to limit my interaction with other people. I want to end this video on a positive note. We can't stop the outbreak, but we can reduce the impact. And the ways that we're going to reduce the impact are doing the things on the list here, uh, including social distancing. That means uh, reduce the transmission of the disease from person to person. That is, you have to reduce your interactions with other people and reduce the chance that you will get sick and reduce the chance that you will pass on the disease once you get sick. So we can do something about it, but it's actually going to take all of us.